human soul with a free will surrendered arifin who do we call arifin arifin usko bolte hain jo marifat ki ala maqamat par pahuncha hua hota hai the one with the most highest understanding meaning he is one with allah so he had a free will but he surrendered his free will the difference between angel and arifin is angel only does what allah want him to do meaning he waits for allah to order and then he follows the order arifin they are at the highest rank than angel listen to me carefully arifins are in the highest rank than angel arifin makes angel subhanallah because they have the highest understanding of the law of allah because he is one with allah living in this world a moment like peer sadardin peer nasir khosro and other moments in our throughout the history have reached the level where they are above the angels and above all of those ranks that we can imagine they go much further and they become one with imam still living in this world and then they surrender their own free will up whatever they do it may not seem right to us sometimes or it may seem too good for us or we, we may say how can it be doesn't matter what they are doing it is with the will of the imam of the time so but it is us who not understanding what this person is doing so sometimes we see arifin doing things that one of the story of his other din that one day he didn't show up for the morning jamaat sana or morning uh, classes or morning lecture or wise in jamaat sana so everybody start looking for him to see what happened to peer sahib he was supposed to be here in the morning and peer sahib was were nowhere to be found and they finally found him at one of the houses it was one of the women and they went over there and said pizza we need to go what are you doing over here pizza says i cannot go because i owe this lady some money and the lady will not let me go they say what do you need to do then he said why don't you go to jamaat sana did we not collect some money in jamaat sana today they say yeah we so bring their money and give to her so i can come with you or the some money Mukhi Sahib, Kamran Sahib, or whoever had went there, they said, "No, we cannot do that. What kind of fear are you? And how can he ask us to give you the dasal money for something you have done bad?" So they left. They left him there, and they said, "We don't need a fear like that." Next Mukhi Sahib from next Jamaatana comes, and the next Mukhi Sahib from next Jamaatana comes, and finally one of the Mukhi Kamran Sahib shows up. and say what was the matter was going on and he repeats himself says i owe this lady some money so if you give her some money so i can go with you guys and they say how do we do that they go to jamaatana bring me the dasal money and give to her they say labak they go to jamaatana they bring the dasal money and give to the lady and take the pizza with them and in ginan it ends like this so there were the only mukhi kamriya and the jamaat they received the salvation mm-hmm. all the other jamaat failed yes. the point was the arifin does things that we do not understand sometimes it does not mean they are wrong it is us the lack of knowledge within us that we don't understand that we don't understand but in the ginan it said it was that last mukhi kamriya in the jamaat who received the salvation due to their action so what they did they cared about the peer and his hukum 
Remember Peer Puchin and Chalwano? You're supposed to do what Peer is telling you to do. Don't use your own intellect in front of the Arifin. Because the Arifin are with the Marifat, with the highest, most highest understanding. So that is one of the examples, inshallah, in future. We will use the example of other Arifins and see how people mistake them or misunderstand them because they are not understanding what kind of imtihan or the exam is on them. So this was one of the argument here. And inshallah in a few minutes we will open the floor for questioning. Does Allah keep any power over our free will? Like it says, yeah, there are three situations in which Allah does not give us free will. And that is the life, and one can argue, did you not say last week that we have come over here with our own free will? Yes, with His permission. Meaning, we have our free will, but He has the power over it. And he can say yes or no. And that was your question earlier. The duration of life, how long are we going to stay here? And the death is, are in the hands of Allah. So you may still wish to die before death. Or you may wish to become alive. Now this life over here is of, of the two kinds. One truly becoming alive in this world through Ibadat Bandagi, you can actually become alive. So the life that we are living today, it will looks like and sound like death. Because that is the actual life with the Imam. Not this life. So we do we can wish that, but Ali Allah is the one who can grant it and say yes and with his permission we can die or we can live. We can wish. Wish is still ours. But it is same who can give permission or not to give permission. Can free will be surrendered? Yes. And we have talked about this already. It is for the Arifin or the higher level of Mu'mineen. When a Mu'min start to walk on a Sirat al-Masakim, he becomes Salik. And then he start to do his ibadat with the ismi azam granted by the imam. He becomes abid. And when he successfully finishes that ismi azam and receives the nur, again, the question you can write it down, not the first nur that he will receive. We are talking about the highest level of the nur and the understanding when he becomes one with the Imam, at that place, he surrenders his free will to Allah. Meaning, everything else he does after that, he does with the tongue and the action of Allah. So there is a mashur, a very famous um, Hadith Akutsi, O Bani Adam, O children of Adam, follow me in true sense and I will become your ears, your eyes, your tongue, your hands and your feet so you may walk. So we are talking about that level of Arifin who have become one with him. And in Surah Bakrai, number 131, it talks about Ibrahim. He was the one, in the Quran says, I surrender my free will to you, my Lord. And that was the proof that we were using from the Quran. And that is the true sense of Arifin, who would do that. This is the one I was talking about earlier that we are sometimes arguing for free will and sometimes we are arguing without the free will. Both in one single paragraph. So, 
when do we have a, we have free will and when we don't have a free will when we came to this world we had a free will to say yes or no matter of fact we were the one who volunteered ourselves to come over here with our own free will and with the permission of allah we came and we still have a free will but if we don't use the free will to go back to him and we do things that we were not supposed to do the burden or on our soul due to the sin that we commit over here he pushes the free will down and almost suppresses so much that we lose our free will but remember that is temporary So how long do we lose this free will for? It depends on how much sin we have committed. How far down have we gone? Or at what level are we in? If we have just moved and if we I don't know was this class or some other class we were looking at a clock. And we were if we are at number 6 level on the clock which is most bottom number number 6 and we are moving up to the number 12 and number 12 being one with the imam depends on what number are we in if we have not even budged from number 6 then it will take long time and with one count almost 50000 years to receive our free will back because at that point you have given the jannat but you, this jannat is imposed on you you are in there like you are in a jail so when a person is in jail even though he is free to do things meaning he can walk around in his cell but he is not free to go outside he is not free to eat whenever he wants he is given food when time comes so free will is taken from them this what imam sulama just says so if you wish to go to jannat even jannat is a jail there is only one reason that in smali tariqa you will never hear or talk about the jannat and those what what talk do we have we are here you want to be one with the imam we are on number 6 we want to be on number 12 we don't talk about 5 4 3 2 1 but it is our choice if we want it to be from 6 to 5 then so be it that is our free will if we want to go there but as soon as you get to number 5 you lose your free will because there is a jannat where there is no free will you are in that jannat without the free will because you are put there as a punishment for the sin that you have committed but it's not permitted remember it's just temporary once you repent once you realize what you have done wrong you move on until you get all the way back to number 12 because eventually everyone who have come down must go back to him willingly or unwillingly we all have to get back to number 12 so let's come to this one over here if you remember in our previous lecture that we have talked about that those people who have come over here with their own free will but not with the full guidance of the imam of the time and we have said they will not be asked any question and i know it was surprising to us because we always heard that dil dil na lekha le se ji we all have to be answerable to something but here is quran in ayat in surah rahman it says you will not be asked of anything meaning there are different kind of people some they will be asked of every single thing and when peace have said you will be taken the sabbath of every single second yes 
for us we have to answer because we will have no excuse we have the guidance we have the knowledge we have the imam we have the ismi azam we have the jamaatana what else do we want we have no excuse so we will be asked and we would have to answer but others who has nothing to guide them back how unfair god would be if he said how come you didn't follow my imam imam i had never even heard of imam in my entire life so the answers are on the rank the higher you go so if you take the example of our jamaat so maybe some in our jamaat may not be answerable that much but you definitely because now with this knowledge you have no excuse and if imam comes and asks aziz bhai did you not tell them i say i will i remember it was for us shadi and we had planned for the uncle so and i told them that and you will have no excuse as we go higher rank so i wanted to give you little bit lee away here so we don't we are not that scared actually most of us may not even be answerable to you most of us because allah brings all of us with a one single soul and that one soul is answerable to allah so as we go higher and higher you may if you are answerable to allah meaning you are that one single soul and answerable for the entire jamaat but until then you are okay you may have to answer little bit here and there but you always can say ya mola he did not teach us good you know he was not a good teacher he just blame it on me and then he will ask me and i will say the same thing i'm i'm learning from you guys all these cases <laughs> right ya mola my teacher he tried honestly he tried <laughs> but i did not learn right so some people will have a will have to answer and some will not have to answer depending on what stage you are at and i would say the people who will answer they will answer happily they will answer happily just think of it that you are going to mola and you are their one single soul okay you are the one single soul and you are going there to mola mola says did i not give you all the knowledge and everything that you had you had all the resources why didn't you not do this and this and this for yourself and for your family for your children for your brother and sister for your jamaat why didn't you do it and you can say mola whatever ability i had i did it to full of my ability full of my power whatever i had whatever resources i had available i did and because he is merciful he will see your niyat was good and you will be okay remember in our religion you don't need to be afraid of anything there's no fear allah is not going to put us in in hell he's not going to burn us he's not going to punish us is most merciful just believe that he is most merciful only thing we have to do is we have to have a good niyat and we do our best and that's all imam is asking us to do just to do our best nothing more nothing less and all the other proofs and arguments i think they are pretty much clear in quran again and again has told us that we have our free will to do good or the bad and allah has given everything to us everything that we could ask and everything we did not even know to ask he has given us everything 
possibly that we can use in our favor to go back to him as quickly as possible and become one with the Imam as quickly as possible. I mean, we are those fortunate few that have received the Ismi Azam from the Imam and with all the Dua Ashish. You know, and the time that we are living in, the time of Qiyamah that we are living in, it is much easier today than it ever was before. A lot of people think, if you ask a uh, Jewish, what was the best time in the world? They will say when Moses was alive. When, if you ask a uh, Christian, you say when Isa was alive. And if you ask a Muslim, they would say when Muhammad was alive. For Ismaili, it's all good times because we are always with the Imam as And especially today. In this Diamond Jubilee, look at how Imam has given us Ismi Azam. And how much Dua Shishi has given us. I think this is the best time. We are those lucky and fortunate moments. And I'm sure we are not just here coincidentally. We must have done something, or our parents must have done something, and with their Dua. And with their asking, we are here today with this Imam at this time where he has given all that he had never done it before for other times and other ages. The willingly and unwillingly, we all have to go back to him. I think this is one of the most beautiful kuliya, the principle in Quran. There is a hadith, I don't know what is the reference of that. It says, Allah looks at the people and says, that, go ahead and use your free will. Do whatever you want. But when you get tired, come to me and surrender your free will. Then I will take you to where I want to take you. And there is a beautiful ayat in the uh, in Bible. It's Jeremiah 29.11. It says, Allah has planned for you. He does not want to harm you. The Allah says, you do whatever you want. But then, when you're tired, come to me, and I will take you to the right place. I will guide you. So if you, if you can pull that uh, Jeremiah 29.11, it's a beautiful uh, ayat in, in Bible. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. SubhanAllah. He said, He has a plan for us. But what do we have to do? Surrender ourselves to Him. Because when we use our free will, sometimes we may not be following His plans. And He would not say anything. Because that is your free will. But as soon as we surrender ourselves to Him, then He has a plan for us. He wants to prosper us, not to harm us. G. So, you know, we are so blessed in this time that we have surrendered our free will in a way by taking Ismail Azam, going to Imam's Huzur and saying that we surrender, we submit ourselves to you, Imam, and in return, Imam gives us Ismail Azam. Our forefather used to call Ismail Azam Bada Kaam, the great deed, great work, bada kaam. In some uh, Persian cultures, they would call it kare buzruk, the, the work which is buzruk, elevated. So the submitting our free will and taking Ismail from him is such a huge blessings for us and a good deed for us, for our soul we have done, that today we are here gathered to understand this Ismail the power of the free will, and know how to elevate our ranks. Because when we take this Ma'azam, we don't realize that we are actually saying that your command is my will. Your farman is my will. I will sacrifice my sleep, my time, and I'm going to meditate. I'm going to do ibadah. 
and it is the barkat of that isme azam that word that in our heart we now are curious to know more about our religion it's all due to that one submission of free will so it is so important to understand the power of free will and the submission of it we all have heard that humans can become angel humans can become animal but how to become so one way of thinking is oh my sins burdens of you know waking up or coming to classes or to think it in a way that we have submitted our free will this is imam's blessing the more i do the more i elevate my ranks it is his will to prosper us but when we don't understand that then what we do our we use our intellect the aql e garizi the intellect which is needy and we do not follow the farman of the aql e kul because he being the aql e kul is telling us submit your free will and this submission is also in levels it's all about ranking today we submitted by taking isme azam waking up for ibadat tomorrow in this class i would say that after that we all have agreed to come and attend this classes do our homework learn so level by level we are submitting our free will we are using our time and our breath in his farman bardari to get to where he wants us to be where be one with him so i would like to request barkat sahib to end this session with this gina aati adhina my sins but you know what i submit my free will to you and this is my vinti this is my giriya zari to you that make me say things make me do things what you want me to do i want to walk with your will not my free will so it's a huge thing to be human the reason we are ashraful makhlukat the best creation of allah because of our free will that's the reason actually free will because we with our intellect can use our free will to whatever way we want but with this understanding of this power we submit this most valuable precious power to imam and we say let us do what you will so you would not blame me tomorrow because i don't want blame we are scared we are weak we are feeble so we want mola papa to guide us hold my hand take me because i can't when we say i know and i can he says okay why don't you go do what you want to do so that's where the test is when we think of ourselves knowledgeable capable smart intelligent then he says okay go ahead and do then if we do that all the blame is ours but when we say mola we submit our free will that's beautiful hadith <coughs> oh bani adam follow me if you do then i will become your eyes so what we see what he sees we see what he hears we hear how can that be what allah hears we hear imagine the power what he says we it will come out of our tongue so it, the, the it's like that one soul we came from you know surah nisa 4 by 1 we in this life living this in this world become one with that soul then that arif e kamil arif is no more of this worldly person he is he is elevated what he says what he does what he sees 
it's all being with the imam of the time is there is a ayat like that he says oh muhammad he does not do anything at his own will he does not say anything at his own free will ji question hai so the question okay what is your question sir i have the, the same question 